Hello, in this video I want to talk to you about my Google Sum of Code project. It's about Athens on Ember Smalltalk. So Athens is basically a vector graphics library that was built by Igor Stasenko and it runs on Faro. And there are ambi ambitions in Faro to use this for more rendering in the future. So what do you need to get started? You need the repository and there are actually two repositories and the most important repository is Amber Athens library and this repository contains the actual Smalltalk code. So this is where the actual Athens code is. And as an example you can use Amber Athens tutorial and this will show you how to use Athens in existing Amber Smalltalk projects. So just as an example you create, this is a Git repository, and in this example, I included the actual Athens source code as a Git submodule, and I also included Ember as a Git submodule, and you can read about this in the Ember wiki. And if you want to, if you're new to Ember, you might want to check the Ember website just for the pre prerequisites and information on how to run Ember Smalltalk on your computer. Okay, so. Let's get started. Um, in this example, I will show you the Amber Athens tutorial and you simply download it, you check out the repository and then you run the run.sh. And when you do this, a node JS server is created and it listens on port 4000 and there you can find the Athens tutorial. Okay, so what you can see here is the tutorial code, it consists of several steps. I think it's about 30 steps. And it will explain you how Athens works. And the code is basically just copied from the Faro implementation. And most of the Faro code can just be copied to your Amber Small to your Amber Smalltalk project and it should work. So let's start. It starts with step two. And in this step, we will create the surface. This will create an HTML canvas and all the rendering is done onto this canvas. So the most important command is in this step is Athens HTML surface extend. This will create a new surface and save it to the instance variable surface and we will reuse this surface in the next steps. Okay, so let's do it. And what you can see here, this is the canvas and it's currently empty. Okay, let's go to the next step. In this step, we start drawing. And here we just draw a small green rectangle so we set the paint to green, then we set the shape. This can be any shape. This could also be a path or something else. In this case, it's a rectangle. And then we issue the draw command, which actually draws the rectangle. Okay, and the next step, we'd simply set the background color to black. And here we draw two rectangles, the blue one and the red one, nothing special. And this is where it becomes interesting. In Athens, we have two transformations, a so-called path transform and a paint transform. And the path transform is used to transform the whole scene. So in this example, we translated the canvas or the scene by 100 pixel to the right and 50 pixel to the bottom, which means if we draw something later, the whole scene will be shifted to the right and to the bottom. So we set the translation, we draw a red, rectangle and a blue rectangle and if you compare it to the previous step it moved and this path transform can also be used for scaling so in this example we have rectangles that are different in size and this is done by scaling the rectangle and we can also use the path transform for rotating so this is a rectangle that's rotated by 45 degrees and scaled okay and we can use the paint transform to rotate the paint that is used for filling a shape. In this example, this doesn't make any sense because when we rotate a solid paint, it will still look the same, but it becomes useful for gradients and stuff. And we will see this later. Okay, some more examples. In this example, we created a path and a path consists of several, several segments. And the segment can either be a move segment, a line segment, or a more complex segment like 
a Bezier segment, and we'll, we'll see that later. And we can use a f color to fill, to fill the stroke. And in this example, we have a Bezier curve. And so the way we build paths is we have a builder, and there are several commands we can send to it, either the line to command, which simply creates a straight line, or we can use the curve via command, and there are more commands to provide more parameters to create different kinds of curves. And a path does not necessarily have to be closed, so it can be open, like here. And a path can also be filled. So in this example, this is a path, and we filled it with, with a yellow paint. And yeah. What you can see here is a gradient. It's a linear gradient. And in this example, we used the paint transform. So we used the paint transform to rotate the filling color, in this case the gradient, by 45 degrees, as you can see here. And we can also use it for scaling and so on. What do we have here? Here we have a, have a radial gradient. We can use a bitmap as a paint. Okay, in this case the picture is obviously missing, so let me just let me just take another picture, like this one, and now we have the Ember logo as a background. We can also use another surface as, as a color to fill, to fill shapes, and this, could, this can be used for caching, for example. And the code is straightforward, just take a look at it. Okay, and there are different ways to modify the stroke for a path. We can also use dashing and stuff. And there are several so-called paint modes. And the paint mode decides how the painting is done when we have multiple shapes on top of each other or, or similar stuff. Just uh, let's see how it looks like when we use a XOR. So it looks different. And uh, there are a lot of paint modes in Athens, but only some of them are supported by the HTML canvas. This is a browser limitation. For example, color burn is not supported by most browsers. So this won't work here, and we will get an exception if we use this. But it works in the Faro implementation. Okay, and we have a clipping command, which we can use to, to clip a certain area. And finally, we can draw text. And we can use any font here, any font that's available in the browser, and we can also use web fonts and stuff. Okay, so what we have here in step 32 is a, some kind of a benchmark, and it will render a very complex scene. So let me start the demo, and it will render a tiger. And as you can see here, it's very slow. And in the version I'm showing you here, there is some kind of a performance issue. So this is usually much faster, and I can show you this in, a, in an older version of Amber and Athens. So let's create the surface and go forward. Oops. Or to the tiger demo. And as you can see, it's already much faster. And keep in mind that this is a very old computer, so on a modern computer, this might be even faster. On my desktop computer, I had about 30 frames per second. Okay, so this is basically the, As the Athens tutorial and everything you can do with Athens. And a second part of my Google Sum of Code project was an implementation of a uh, graphics UI library. And just to show you what you can do with this, let's take a look at this. So everything you can see here is rendered on an HTML canvas using Athens. And 
the code that's used for rendering this is similar to, to Morphic from Faro or Squeak. And I can just show you some examples. And by the way, the color green, so you see everything here is green and there are red and green rectangles around. This is just, uh, these are just the damage rectangles that are shown. It's just for debugging purposes. So with this code, I can create a window, Athens window morph. Okay, nothing special so far and I can resize it. Let's go to the next step. Okay. This shows a little bit of the u of the API, which is used for rectangle morphs. I can use transformations for for resizing or for rotating and scaling morphs. And just to give you an example, let's uh, start the IDE. This may take a, take a while. Let's take a look at the halos and let's rotate the whole window. Let's say by 12 degrees. And as you can see, everything is rotated, the window and all its submorphs. And we can we can also write in the in the text box. Yeah. So let's go to the next step. We can add submorphs, like this basic blue morph here. We can use mouse events. Nothing special. Another example of rectangle morphs. There is a special API for rectangle morphs that makes it very easy to create interactive rectangles that change the color when you move the mouse or when you click them. Here we have button morphs. We have the, the ordinary button. We have a radio button and a checkbox. And in the last step, we see an image morph. So, and what you can see here, this little demo, this is just an example of what can be done with Athens. And as you can see, it's more or less fast enough for running high quality and, and very complex applications in the web browser. And keep in mind that this is still under development. So this will become a lot faster in the future. And I will continue working on this after the Google Summer of Code. Okay, so this is basically it. Thank you for watching. And if you're interested in Amber Smalltalk, just take a look at the website amberlang.net. Or if you're interested in the development of, uh, of this little library I showed you here, just take a look at my at my blog. It's a little outdated, but I will try to, to write more articles in the future.